Welcome everyone inside After Effects with a new document open containing just three compositions into the timeline to demonstrate the use of 3D gizmos and camera navigation tools After Effects has to offer. First, I will start by enabling 3D on each of these 2D layers by clicking on the toggle switches and modes to get to the switches and enable the 3D layer switch to the right of each of these layers. As for this background layer, it will remain a 2D layer. Great! Now, working with 3D inside After Effects, it is often recommended that we work with more than one view layout. In this case, inside the Select View layout, I will switch to two views. This is an active view and it's set to active camera. And when I click to the second view to make it active, and by the way, the active view is noted by the blue triangles in its corners, this is also set to active camera. So inside the 3D view pop-up, I will switch from active camera to the left orthographic view. Now, orthographic views have no depth or perspective. They just allow us to select individual layers and reposition them in space as we will see soon after. So the first thing I'm going to do is just click one of these 3D layers and right off the bat, by default, we get the universal 3D gizmo, which enables us to scale, position and rotate an object in a single control. But first, let's talk about what each of these color axes represent. Red is for the X horizontal axis. Green is for the Y vertical axis. And blue is for the Z axis, which is the depth. As for the different gizmos inside After Effects, first we have the position gizmo, which is represented by these arrows here. So we can move this on the X or on the Y, for example. These allow us to move our selection in the direction the arrow is facing. Now, when we move it, notice the pink lines. These work as guides as to how far away the object has been moved from its origin point. All right. Next, we get the scale gizmo. The scale gizmo is represented by the squares. I can do this on the X or I can do this on the Y here. And by the way, if I press the shift key, we can do this uniformly in all directions. All right. Great. Now, the last uh, 3D gizmo is the rotate gizmo, which basically rotate objects. All right. In the direction of the line that the handle is placed. So, for example, I can rotate from the X from the Y or from the Z. Okay. And by the way, if I press the shift key and I start rotating, this is going to snap to 45 degree increments. All right. Great. Now, all of these gizmos do have keyboard shortcuts. For example, the number four is for the position specific gizmo. The number five is for the scale specific gizmo and number six is for the rotation specific gizmo. Now, personally, I like to work with a universal 3D gizmo since all transformations of an object can be done with a single control. So I'm going to switch to that. And one more thing that I want to bring up to your attention is that if we go inside the preferences panel of side After Effects at the very bottom under 3D here, we can actually disable these keyboard shortcuts, the four, five, six for the transform gizmos. If this is unchecked, then After Effects will use these keys as shortcuts to add markers. In this case, I'm just going to cancel that out. The next thing that I want to talk about is placing and arranging 3D layers into space. Right now, we are inside the left view layout using the left orthographic view, but a perspective view will be more helpful seeing our 3D layers in space. 
So inside the 3D view pop-up, I will click on the drop-down menu and switch from the left orthographic view to one of these perspective views. In my case, I will choose the custom view one. With this perspective view, we can see from the top down and at an angle on 3D space. Now, After Effects does come with real-time 3D draft preview located at the bottom of the composition toolbar. The draft 3D helps us get real-time rendering of the changes we make in our 3D layers within After Effects and reduce the lag time in previewing. Once the Draft 3D mode is on, we can also activate the 3D ground plane, which gives us a sense of space while we navigate in Draft 3D preview mode, providing us visual help to position our cameras, lights, and 3D layers in relationship to one another. For example, I will click to select the second 3D layer, and I will push it back into space on the Z-axis using the position gizmo and then move it along the x-axis to position it behind the first 3d layer now notice as i'm moving the 3d layer i can also see where it's placed in relation to the grid at the same time i'm also paying attention to the changes i make to the right view layout the active camera and that's why it is highly recommended that we use more than one view layout when we are working with 3D inside After Effects. I will also reposition the third 3D layer. I will push it back into space on the Z-axis using the position gizmo, and then move it along the X-axis to position it behind the second 3D layer. Again, I'm also paying attention to the active camera view layout to understand where I position the layers in relation to one another. Great. Now, After Effects also has camera navigation controls to help us move around a 3D space. We can access those from the main toolbar or use the designated keyboard shortcuts to swap between those camera controls using the number one, number two, and number three. So I will go ahead and start with the first camera navigation tool by pressing the number one on the keyboard to get to the orbit around cursor tool. So with this camera tool, instead of orbiting relevant to the scene, we can orbit around an object we are clicking on, giving us great control over angles. Now to get to the rest of these control options, we can click and hold or use Shift-1 on the keyboard to cycle through. Next, when we press the number 2 on the keyboard, we get to the Pan Under Cursor tool, which allows us to pan around a scene wherever a cursor has been placed in our perspective view. And last, pressing the number 3 will give us the Dolly Towards Cursor, which allows us to dolly in or dolly out in our perspective 3D view. We can also access those camera controls by using the Alt Option key on a keyboard. So pressing Alt Option and left click, that gives us access to the orbit around tool. Pressing Alt Option and right click will give us access to the dolly in and dolly out. And pressing Alt Option and middle mouse button will give us access to the pan under cursor tool. Now, in the event that you wish to reset your 3D view, click on the view menu and then choose Reset 3D View. Let's not forget inside the Preferences panel and under the 3D column, we can also disable those keyboard shortcuts for the camera navigation. If the option is unchecked, After Effects will use those keys as shortcuts to add markers. In this case, I'm just going to cancel that out. Now that we know how to work with 3D gizmos and camera navigation controls inside After Effects, how about if we animate all of these 3D layers? Right now, in this view, I'm using the custom view one. So inside the 3D view pop-up, 
I will go ahead and click on the drop down and change to an orthographic view. In this case, I will use the top orthographic view. Now, this view will help me to select individual layers and reposition them into space. So, for example, I will mark you select this 3D layer and using the position gizmo, I will go ahead and drag this from the Z axis and just bring it a little closer. I will do the same for this layer here and this one. Okay, now I will mark you select all of these or you can just shift select, it's the same thing. And then the plan here is to actually rotate them. So I will press the letter R on the keyboard. And before I set any keyframes, what I will do is I will do a test drive. So what I'm trying to say on the Y rotation, because I want to rotate them on the Y axis, I will scrub this and see the behavior between the relationship of these 3D layers. As you can see, all of these 3D layers, especially those two, intersect with each other in 3D space. So we have to be very careful and mindful when we're dealing with 3D layers, since some of them can intersect with other layers in close proximity. So what I'm going to do is select, for example, this one and move it along the X axis, move this one along the X axis. Let's bring this out here. And this one, I can actually bring this down a bit here and just reposition them now into space. Okay. You will find yourself doing this quite a lot to get things where you want to get them. All right, great. So let's see, let's mark you select all of these. And now they seem to be great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the degrees back to zero. And then I will click on the Y rotation stopwatch to create the first three keyframes since all these layers are selected. I will scrub the current time indicator to two seconds, create another three keyframes, and then press the letter J on the keyboard to go back to the previous visible keyframes. And then I'm going to scrub this to, let's say, minus 70 something, something along those lines. Okay. At the same time, let me go ahead and just move them in here. Right. And I'm just going to press the letter U to collapse these. And let's go ahead and do a run preview. And by the way, I don't need to have two views. I'm just going to switch to one view now. Press the space bar for the run preview. And this is what we get. Great. But we're not ready yet. What we need to do now is actually to set our view, to set the angle for the beginning of the animation. So for that, I will go ahead and use, of course, these navigation control tools. So I will start with the orbit around the cursor tool. And I'm looking for something like that. I will use the keyboard shortcut, the number three for the Dali cursor. All right, perhaps the number two to just pan this around a little bit. Great. So once you're ready for a shot, once you're happy with your perspective angle, you can create a camera that matches your perspective view by going to the view menu and use create camera from 3D view. This creates a camera in your timeline based on the current perspective, which can change using the camera navigation tools which will help you animate your composition layers much easier. Okay, so the next step is to press the letter P on the keyboard for the position property, create the first keyframe, scrub the current time indicator to two seconds, right? And then let's continue this by pressing again the number one on the keyboard to get to the orbit and I'm gonna move this perhaps this way. Let's do a run PV and see how that works. Looks good. Just make sure that you're on the last keyframe and I need to modify this even more. I'm going to dolly this in a bit, pan this around and continue setting up. 
the way I want them to set up. Just play around with things that might work for me. Perhaps here. Let's do another run preview, press the space bar. There you go. This is what I was going for. All right, now let's see. Here, they just go a little bit out of the screen. So what we can do on this keyframe, just make sure you're at the beginning of the timeline. In my case, I'm gonna press the number two. I'm just gonna pan this to the right here. I'm gonna do another run preview and this is great. Okay, so this is one thing. Another thing is that this animation right now is a linear animation. So what I'm trying to say is I'm going to market select those two keyframes. I will go ahead and access the graph editor, marquee select those two keyframes, and change the linear interpolation to easy is. Once this is done, what I'm going to do is I will select this keyframe and then just play around with the influence handle here. And we're going to change the percentage to something, let's say 80 or 90%. So the way it's going to work is it's going to uh, go fast, it's going to peak, and then it's going to decelerate. So accelerate, peak, and then decelerate. So let's do a run preview here, press the space bar. There you go. Very nice. And if this is what you like, then go ahead and use that. I will do one last time, a run preview. There you go. Now, the event that, again, you like what you see, go ahead and trim your composition. So I will press the letter N, and then just right click to trim comp to walk area. So this is what I was going for, but then again, there is so much you can accomplish inside After Effects using the 3D gizmos and the camera navigation tools. I would like to thank each one of you for visiting my channel, watching the inspiring lectures and project tutorials. Do not forget to subscribe and share the knowledge.